Hey there, this is Dr. Joel Gould with some more vitamin D tips. Now, I've been working on vitamin D for the past five years, but I did not anticipate this coronavirus outbreak. However, vitamin D is highly antiviral because vitamin D powers your immune cells. So we're gonna talk about a bunch of different things all related to vitamin D. Now, what is vitamin D anyway? And what's the big deal? This is a vitamin. This is not a vitamin. A vitamin is something that you take in on a daily basis that acts in your body to do something specific. A hormone is a chemical that acts on multiple different tissues and organs. Vitamin D is a sun hormone. This is a hormone that we make when sunlight, and it has to be UVB radiation, ultraviolet radiation in the B range. And for all you science buffs, 280 to 315 nanometers. I think that's it. Um, and this is a very specific type of sunlight where the sun has to be high enough in the sky for it to pass through the atmosphere to actually produce vitamin D on your skin. Now, what that reaction is that your skin is made of a whole bunch of different types of proteins, but your cell membranes and a big structural component of your body is cholesterol. Now, when sunlight in the appropriate amount strikes your skin, it actually breaks one bond on the B ring of cholesterol and transforms it from cholesterol into vitamin D. And in fact, that's not that weird because cholesterol is your starter molecule. This is the molecule that mother nature created to make testosterone, estrogen, and all kinds of other steroid hormones. This is the starter molecule. We just modify this one thing. Cholesterol, I know you think it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing. This is your main structural component in your body. So if you take a vitamin D supplement, it's exactly the same as if the sun makes it on you. There are some differences. So right now with the coronavirus, you just want to raise your level. All right, do not worry about going out in the sun yet. If you're watching this video and you live north of a line that goes from Los Angeles to Atlanta, you are not able to make vitamin D probably for the next two or three weeks. Now, you can see if you're gonna be able to make vitamin D naturally by downloading an app called D-Minder. All right, and this is an app that will tell you in your local area are you making vitamin D? When is vitamin D available? And it's a really good idea to get some natural sunlight, okay? Um, sunlight on your skin produces more than vitamin D, and we won't talk about that now, but vitamin D is one of the main chemicals. So once this vitamin D gets into your body, it, whether you took a pill or you made it on your skin, it gets absorbed. Now, vitamin D that you made naturally will get absorbed over eight hours. So it doesn't matter if you take your vitamin D at night or in the morning, it doesn't make a difference. Some people will claim they sleep better with vitamin D um, at night, or some people say they can't sleep. But you shouldn't be worried about this. Vitamin D isn't that type of a hormone. This is something that's gonna be built up in your body as a level, okay? Now, um, when you take vitamin D or whether you make it in the sun, the first thing it does is it goes to the liver where you have some special enzymes, and those are your CYP enzymes, CYP. Those are the enzymes that you use in your body to transform vitamin D into its first form, which is the 25-OHD. This is the storage form of vitamin D in your body that your doctor measures. If you've never had a vitamin D test before, you want one. I've been telling my patients for five years now that this one thing, a blood level of vitamin D is the most critical health marker that you can have. And you always want it over 50. You can Google every study in the book that you want. Does it need to be over 40? I think so. If you're gonna err with vitamin D, err on the side of being too high, okay? So 40 is probably enough to do most of what your body wants to do. Go 50, all right? Now the normal range of vitamin D, depending on where you are and what hospital system that you go to, can be variable. Some doctors have it as 20 to 50, where everything over 50 is toxic. That's absolute nonsense. The normal levels that I'm used to that started off here five years ago was 30 to 100. This is nanograms 
per milliliter. If you're watching this in Canada, which I hope you are, hey Canada, is that you need to multiply by 2.5, okay? So I want my patients to be at an ideal range of vitamin D, always over 50. My preferred range for my sleep restoration program is 60 to 80. And in Canada, that's gonna be 150 to 200 nanomoles. Just understand that you don't wanna leave this to chance. Get a vitamin D test.